Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Data Diversity. We'd like to thank you for joining today's webinar, How to Strengthen Enterprise Data Governance with Data Quality, sponsored today by SyncSort. Just a couple of points to get these started. To, to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, or if you like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. And if you'd like to chat with with each other or with us, feel free to do so. Just click the chat icon, which is in the bottom middle of your screen. Now let me introduce to you our speakers for today, Divinity Powis and Harold Smith. Harold is the Director of Product Management at SyncSort, responsible for the Trillium Software product line, and co-author of Patterns of Information Management, published by IBM Press. Harold has spent the past 20 years specializing in information quality, integration, and governance products, with a focus on accelerating customer value and delivering innovative solutions. He has written extensively on the integration, management, and use of information. Harold has been issued four patents in the field of data management and integration. Divinity is a pre-sales consultant for SyncSort Trillium and specializes in data quality, data governance, data integration, and big data. She has considerable expertise in data quality and enrichment, having spent 16 years in the data marketing arena. She started and ran her own database marketing agency for 10 years before its acquisition, which she has stayed as a group head in data and information sites for four further years. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Divinity and Harold to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon, uh, and welcome everybody. Uh, we're glad to have you uh, join us today. And uh, well, let's get underway. You have these slides. Yeah. So what we wanted to cover today, uh, just kind of give a, a little brief introduction talk a little bit about, you know, why data quality, data governance are top of mind, and then get into some of the understanding of, of how this is such a symbiotic relationship between these two uh, core capabilities. And looking at then how data quality is strengthening kind of the overall enterprise data governance uh, framework. As uh, Shannon said, I'm Harold Smith. Uh, Divinity Powers uh, is with me as well. and. Uh, Let's get underway. We, we live in a world of data. We live in a world with more and more data all the time. We've heard various uh, phrases coming about in terms of you know, data is the oil of the future, the fuel of the future. You know, it's the driver of growth and change. And it's changing how we're doing business. It's changing how we're approaching business. It's changing how we need to manage and govern our overall environment because it's a different Quantity. It's not something that's just extracted and refined. This is you know, digital information, but it's core and central to each and every one of us. You know, this is, in effect, our digital presence. It's how we're recognized by all the organizations that we're dealing with. And as we're interacting with these particular uh, organizations, we have an expectation that our information is going to be managed and governed appropriately. And similarly, we also see, you know, the regulations you know, are being applied to help, you know, persist this, this view that, you know, everybody has you know, a right to, you know, the, you know, the right information being collected and being able to, you know, utilize that in an appropriate uh, manner. And this is really fueling a lot of, of approach in terms of, you know, thinking about data governance. But it's also the way that organizations look to, you know, extend their businesses. How can they best reach out to us as consumers? How can they reach out to their suppliers, their vendors, and, and do more with those relationships and really utilize the information that they have to help drive, you know, business benefit. So with that, in mind, data governance, data quality are, are really central to this particular mission. And you know, this, this really comes into play in a number of different factors. I mean, first of all, you know, we all know that volume, complexity of data is growing, and it's growing in multiple different ways. It's not just structured information anymore. It's unstructured information. It's sensor data. It's all the different feeds coming in from our mobile phones, our Twitter devices, our social media activity. Huge growth. How do we address that particular challenge? 
we're also looking at, you know, how do we get more information out of that? You know, with all this data coming in, how can we get more effective correlations? How can we dissect this in a way uh, or analyze this in a way that's going to give us new insights and, and allow us to do our jobs more effectively? So we're in a world where our expectations about what data can do, what can, you know, the value it can provide is growing, the expectations about how it's going to be managed are growing, yet at the same time we're consistently hearing that trust and confidence, you know, generally is declining. There's a large you know, segment of business leaders who simply don't trust the information that they're getting to be able to drive decisions. And similarly, we see that aspect in terms of trust and confidence extended out into some of the uh, you know, challenges that we as consumers have around data. One of the consequences of that is you know, broader and deeper compliance and regulation. And that's certainly one of the aspects that we need to look at you know, from a governance perspective. And we see this with GDPR, we see this with the, you know, the California Data Privacy Act. There's going to be more and more focus in terms of how our organizations are managing data and how we're you know, ensuring that we're in fact complying with that data. So our, our, our CDO is left with lots of touch points, lots of questions. And it's not just the CDO. I mean, this is across the board. I see this in interactions with our CEO and each and every one of our, our C-level leaders. And I think, you know, in terms of our interactions with various organizations, we see this consistently as well. How do we get a handle on this? You know, and can I trust it? Are we compliant? Do we have the right internal training and policies? How do I democratize this data? How do I get people data literate? Huge range of issues. And that's really what you know, central data governance is about. How do we begin to wrap our heads around you know, these particular challenges? Thanks, Harold. Hi, everyone. It's uh, Divinity here calling from a windy UK. So why is data quality so important? I guess when we think about it, most people start to think straight away about data quality affects the sales and marketing parts of an organization in terms of analysis or dashboards or reporting or segmentation models and targeting and so on. But of course it affects all parts of the business, workloads and scheduling, logistics, finance reports, anything that, dis that, 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 that needs any form of analytics or decision from that, of course, is impacted by the data. And none more so than, of course, than the, than the risk side, the governance, the compliance. So data is really important. The quality of that data is imperative across the entire business. Let's just have a look at some terminology because we all have different flavors and terminology. If we, if we think about data governance as simply as about the set of policies, the processes, the rules, the responsibilities, and it's ensuring that the data is available, usable, it's accurate, compliance, and so on, and, it, and it's secure. If we think about that in practice, what we're, of course, talking about is things like the key data elements, glossaries, dictionaries, the data stewards, the council, the availability, and the compliance of that data, and that's pretty much exclusive to data governance. And if we think about, again, what we, th what we when we talk about data quality, because everyone has their own their own flavor and meaning when they say data quality. From a data quality perspective, I talk about that making sure it's fit for purpose for its intended operational use in the business. And we're talking sp specifically about the accuracy of that data, the completeness, the consistency, the relevance, the validity of that data. And again, tangibly, we're talking about things such as data cleansing, data parsing, matching, suppression, deduplication, enrichment, profiling. And again, those are fairly exclusive to data quality. But of course, there are areas where there's overlap and there's areas of this common interest, so to speak. And there are things such as policies and rules. We might come to it from a different side of the, from the, of, of the, of the circle, so to speak. One side's coming from the business side, one's coming from a technical side, but we still have that area of common interest. The consistency and standardization of that data 
reporting, analytics, dashboarding, monitoring, and also that key one, data lineage, being able to tie that data back all the way through to source to see how it's come about. It therefore creates what I like to call this, this symbiotic relationship between data quality and data governance. And as soon as I tend to talk about symbiotic relationships, everyone looks at me and says, what are you talking about, divinity? And of course, it forms from that word symbiosis, meaning a relationship between two parties which often sit together for mutual benefit but don't compete with each other, which is rather unusual. And of course, we can see that here. If we think about data quality, it's all about making sure we have the highest data quality, and we know that. But of course, in order for that to work, and in order for it to work effectively within the business framework, it needs to sit alongside and within a data governance framework too, to make sure that the data is clean and high quality for the business needs. So therefore, it relies on data governance to perform to perfection. And equally, in isolation, data governance, which looks after the, the more commercial side of it, the business, the, the, the rules, the policies, the dictionaries, and so on. And again, in isolation, it can't work too, because it needs those data quality tools. And this is important not only to clean the raw data, but also to help compile the standards and the rules and monitor that data over time. But of course, this is really important to us all because we all use information, as, as Harold alluded to already, we all use information and intelligence every day to make the right decision or what we think is the right decision. So we all love dashboards and maps and charts and we use them to make business decisions. So here, for example, this is a simple dashboard which, which is showing sales by region for parts of the UK. Now, I might look at that and make a decision and say, I'm going to target the highest performing region and I'm going to talk, talk to them in a certain manner. I'm going to talk to the lowest performing region in a different manner. And of course, I'm relying on that data, therefore, being accurate. But in this particular case, without knowing it, my dashboard is actually throwing up incorrect information. The data that sits underneath that is giving me false positives. So here, for example, I have three different instances, three different spellings of the same county name. So already it's diluted my understanding of that particular value by three. And lo and behold, we can see straight away, before and after data quality, we can see the difference it makes. So for example here, the first, the highest performing region first, before data quality, falls to third. But the one that was in sixth place rises to the top. So had I used the information beforehand, I'd have been targeting and talking to the wrong people in the wrong manner. And that's really important. So data quality affects everything including data governance, which is what we're going to show today. And one of the things that you know, we always have to keep in mind as we're, as we're looking at this is that you know, what you don't know can hurt you. And, and this is really you know, critical you know, as we look at sort of that data governance perspective and say, you know, how, how are we complying? How are we monitoring this information? How are we assessing you know, our overall you know, value of governing you know, data to the organization. All these particular pieces, whether it's looking at, you know, particular, you know, business information or even our information that we've captured on metadata and systems that, you know, we're using to help, you know, facilitate data governance, we want to be able to have trust in that information. And the key elements of data quality are really helping to address a lot of, of, of core issues. And those issues are growing as we see more and more types of information. So this is not only ranging from sort of, you know, here's your you know, particular sets of fields and attributes and are they complete, are they, you know, valid for their particular values, but we're not having to deal with a huge range of information such as sensors and stuff, which may be dropping data. You know, we may have signal loss. We may have noise and extraneous information, you know, particularly as we think about social media data. There's simply a lot of information coming in that may not be relevant for what we're trying to put together here differing levels of aggregation, invalid correlations. How are we understanding, you know, these particular challenges? And the approach that we begin to take in terms of addressing this, you know, really are, are very dependent on core data quality capabilities. Things that, you know, we need to, you know, be able to see, you know, in this particular context. How do we enumerate what we're even trying to do, what we're even trying to look at? Well, that's really a central piece in terms of data governance. You know, it's 
whether it's policy based, whether it's standards, whether it's simply what we're trying to you know, address and measure and be able to communicate out to a broader audience, you know, this is really central to supporting that data governance initiative. And that is going to be important for us to be able to acquire that information in a way that we can understand it, discover what it's about, validate it, use in, not just in sort of our traditional dimensions, but really looking at the, the broader holistic issues that we're now facing with this volume and variety of data. Capturing that in a way, documenting in a way that we are communicating our findings out to our business leaders, our peers, the organization as a whole, so people have an understanding of what they want to be able to do and, and utilize this information for, and be able to do that repeatedly in a way that's you know cataloged so that people can find it. Great, thanks, Hal. So the role of data quality and data governance simply can't be overstated. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult for organizations to, to respond to regulation in a quick manner. And that's, and as Harold alluded to already, that's, that's for a number of reasons. You know, data now comes from a number of different source systems and disparate systems and data silos. The number of touch points with the end customer has grown, has grown hugely. And on top of that, uh, you know, there's a huge demand for real-time data, as in real-time being sub-second. And that comes from both the business, but also the end customer too. You know, if I went to buy, in to buy a shop, it went, went in to buy something from a shop, I'd expect them to know about everything I've bought online and vice versa. In real time, that's what we expect nowadays. So the, 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 the bottom line is, all of these facets demand that the source data is accurate. You know, that old adage of rubbish in, rubbish out, or garbage in, garbage out, is more pertinent than it ever was before. So we all know what the regulations are for, so I'm not going to go through these in any detail. You know, they're there to protect privacy and disclosure, risk management, fraud, fraud prevention, and so on, and anti-money laundering and terrorism and things like that. And there's obviously all, there's a huge variety of types of regulation too, depending on the industry. Obviously, the most pertinent to, to, to European at the moment is uh, GDPR, which came in 10 months ago. And there's a similar one coming into America now, CCPA. And of course, if you're in financial services, you've got a whole plethora of, of regulations, FSCS, FATCA, AML, Basel. If you're in uh, healthcare, it's HIPAA and so on. So there's a whole host of them. What I thought would be useful for you all today would be, say, to take three of them and look at specific areas where data quality actually helps a particular part of that regulation process. So we're going to pick on GDPR to start with, which I'll run you through. So if you think about GDPR, it's obviously a whole host of things in there, but it's essentially about knowing what personal data and sensitive data you hold on customers and is it up to date, what you're doing with it, how you're processing it, but you actually have permission from the customer now to actually do something with that data. Where is it stored? Is it held on multiple systems? How and how much is it duplicated by? Who has access to it and how are you keeping it safe? That's, I guess, quite straightforward. But on top of that, customers, the end customers, have now recognized that they actually have teeth. They have a lot more power than they had before. So they have new demands on the business too. So what do we know about me? The data you hold about me is actually wrong, so you've got to fix it. The so-called right to be forgotten, erase all my data for good, I don't want to hear from you again. That has a huge impact for businesses. How my data has been breached, and you've got, to be, you've got to be acknowledged within 72 hours. How are you using my data? And an unusual one of demanding that a human deals with your data rather than machine learning or, or, or artificial intelligence. And suddenly, of course, it's serious. Google's been hit with the first $44 million, uh, $44 million pound GDPR fine. And there's an estimate that had GDPR been put in place in the prior five years before last year, it would have reached £25 billion pounds in fines. So suddenly, it's very, very serious. So if you think about it from a business perspective and how it actually impacts the business and how data quality strengthens the governance in, in terms of GDPR. Let's have a look at the situation. We've got a customer here. They've, they've interacted through different touch points with a business. So they've interacted with a retail shop, an online shop, 
uh, a call centre, a service centre, a website, whatever it is. And of course, as we all do, we've left behind that data trail of different amounts of information, different qualities of information in different formats, different structures. And on top of that, we also have permission clash. So on three or four systems, I've said, yes, I can be communicated. And on one, I haven't. And we all know this. We know this from a personal perspective. And of course, what we're looking for, what we're trying to strive for is that perfect record, that single view, that golden record, customer 360. Call it what you want. Call it like what you want. It's the same thing, that perfect record, which picks up the best bits from each record, but more specifically, manages those permissions. So if we have five records of the same customer, we have that ability to identify that customer by one record and manage those customer preferences and privileges accurately. And of course, if you have single view, we all know the fluffy marketing soft benefits that you get from that. The analytics to start with will be accurate. Accurate analytics allows good segmentation and, and marketing and profiling and targeting and so on. And of course, all the reports, the dashboards, the visualization will be accurate. You won't get those false positives. When we think about single view and high quality data, we often always think about the business benefits. But of course, there are benefits for the customer too, that customer experience. They will be receiving materials and content and service and products that are relevant to them at the right time with the right channels if they've got the right permissions. So their whole experience will be better. So it's about understanding those customers, which allows and enables and leads to you know, more appropriate communications, sending the right things at the right time. And from a general business perspective, of course, it's simply about making the right decisions, making the best decisions for the business. But GDPR is about much more than simply what data you're holding, what you're doing with it, have I got permissions and so on. That's a really important tenet of GDPR, don't get me wrong. But it's about more than that as well, because regulation demands proof and evidence and documentation. So these, five, these, these four articles here, you have to prove that you've actually adhered to the principles. You have to prove that you've actually processed that data correctly. You have to provide documentation that you've actually done it in a secure manner and that you've, and you've actually understood all that. So it's all very well and good having high quality data. GDPR goes much wider than that and DQ data quality has to provide proof that you've actually gone through the right measures to provide that data quality. So I guess as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a summary, it's data quality tools are no longer nice to have. They're absolutely fundamental, they're core, they're critical to any business, especially when it comes to anything to do with data governance. So let's have a look at a few specific areas where DQ helps that compliance. The first is discovery, and that is all about looking at the data that the business has, highlighting where the data is bad. You've got typos, data in the wrong field, data out of date, incorrect data. Or you might have data which doesn't comply to the required format or structure or syntax. A key one, it also exposes where you have personal or sensitive data buried in comments fields or data birth fields or whatever. So it helps you identify where you actually have key information, but you wouldn't otherwise be able to identify it. And on top of that, as well as exposing and understanding the data, it's also helping build the rules which then work with data governance to actually monitor the, on the data on an ongoing basis. So it's about auditing and monitoring at the same time. Moving on from discovery, DQ also then, of course, helps put into place the actual mechanisms to clean that data in both real time and batch to actually put into production all those cleaning processes to make sure that, that data is as high quality as possible, to make sure that duplications are identified and matched and merged. And on top of that, again, that full traceability, that full data lineage. So at any point in time, as well as actually cleansing and matching and merging that data if necessary, you've actually got proof of what you're actually doing to make sure that you are hitting those GDPR compliances. And the final thing is, of course, is then, is then integrating with other systems. So data quality is all very well and good, 
but it has to fit into other parts of the business too. So it has to fit in with a data governance tool. It has to fit in with a dashboarding tool or a business intelligence tool or a cube to actually show what the DQ process has done. So that's just a simple snapshot. I mean, just in summary, you know, if you were to sum up GDPR in one sentence, it's simply GDPR mandates the tightest control of customer data possible. And it's fair to say that without DQ, duplication of bad data will generally propagate across the business as it does. And over time, that will inevitably escalate to non-compliance of GDPR in some form. And so data quality effectively helps ensure you know, GDPR compliance. That's how important data quality is in this case to GDPR. So Divinity was talking about GDPR. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things that, you know, is really central there is, is just how critical, you know, data quality is to help inform the overall picture of, of the policies and the compliance. And we see this, of course, in, in other regulations as well. I want to want you, uh, you know, here through FACTA, um, you know, which is a little different uh, case. Now, FACTA, you know, it, you know at the, the general level is, you know, very specific to, you know, certain, you know, financial institutions, you know, is, and it's particularly uh, in relation to U.S. citizens and, you know, their relationship with uh, financial institutions outside the United States because we're trying to look at it and understand, you know, financial crimes, their overall enforcement. It's central to this is being able to um, flag, uh, you know, can you just go back one slide, please? Yeah. So what really central here is being able to, um, you know, require you know non-U.S. financial institutions to you know find who's a U.S. citizen and be able to report that to the U.S. government. One of, one of the interesting things I found when I was just going through and doing my my taxes just uh, you know a week or so ago, how many of these documents actually have little fact of flags? On the night. This is something that's actually now getting into kind of the broad range of, of kind of the consumer, uh, you know, the the individual who has accounts with organizations, and being able to validate that this is in fact correct. So data quality really becomes sort of a, a central piece in terms of helping to deliver compliance. And, and, you know, I think the you know, while, while this is you know a specific case, it, it's it's a strong example of just where you know data quality needs to go beyond just simply identifying you know is this particular field populated or not, but being able to really look at the data in a way that we can help ensure that the information is is linked together in a way that we can validate for components. It's really all just looking at. How do we get closer to that sense of accuracy, which, which is often a, a challenging dimension to, to look at, but get to the accuracy of the data being held? We need to be able to you know, address things that are, in, in fact, conflicting information and conflicting flags and indices that, that really help determine who's who. And once you know, dealt with the issues in terms of remediation and harmonizing that, you're at a point where right decisions can be made. In this case, you know, ensuring that an organization is in fact compliant. The type of example here is simply, you know, where I have codes, I've captured the information that says, okay, I, I have a fact a country code, it's US, it's something I need to report on. But is that actually correct? And then I think that's where you know we need to be able to go beyond just sort of the, the typical, you know, looking at particular values to be able to look at the relationships of information. This is central to us you know, being able to look at any type of information, you know, what, that we're applying to compliance purposes or analytical purposes. So we don't want to waste time. We don't want to waste resources. We want to be able to understand that you know this is in fact the right value it identifies the, you know, the real country of origin, irrespective of, of how the data has been captured. Similarly, 
we have to be able to you know, look at the correspond you know, the other relationships. So in a lot of these cases, you're going to need to be able to look at correlations in multiple directions. Whether you're looking to say, okay, this information says it's U.S. Does, does the address information in fact correspond to what I expect it to be, or if it's not identified as say U.S. What do we actually speak? So being able to look at pieces in both directions are really central you know, to, the, to that. How do you begin to highlight uh, you know, some of those corresponding uh, relationships? Next slide. Okay. So we want to be able to identify where duplicates you know, are, you know, have conflicting values, be able to you know, continue to you know, expand on that particular set of information, look at those particular conflicts, be able to identify this in a way that we can then provide this out to data stewards, subject matter experts who can begin to really look in here and begin to make you know, decisions around this, this data and which have particular implications for the regulations we're dealing with. As we go through that process of, of looking for those conflicts, identifying those particular differences, being able to flag those, being able to identify those particular uh, challenges, and then how do we begin to harmonize that data so that we get to the point where you know, the records have the right flag, the right indices, to deal with our ongoing reporting. And this is really sort of you know, a, a very central part of data quality. It's very central part to being able to then meet the particular compliance regulations. So the results out of, out of this, we get a good sense of you know, wh which records are you know, implicated, you know, have values that we want to be able to address, which things are potentially suspect, which things are not implicated in the particular process. And that then drives to, you know, what, what do we have in terms of the exercise? You know, if it's implicated, that's something we're reporting on. We know what we need to do with that. The suspect, how do we approach that? You know, how, how do we get the manual intervention in here to be able to, you know, make sure that we, we're making the right particular decisions? If it's not implicated, then we should be reporting on it. And again, this goes back to the core process pieces around data governance, being able to make sure that we're getting the right level of compliance applied. This is what our policy says. How are we meeting those particular policies? And we're doing that through capabilities such as core data quality approaches that really help lend themselves to being able to get you know, answers that we need at the right time. Yeah, summary here, you know, if you're getting the wrong information, if you're missing information, if you're not capturing you know, the right level of information, you're at risk of failing your particular regulations. That has implications for you as an organization, it has implications for each of us who, as individuals who may in fact have relationships with these organizations as well because that information is then coming back to you as an individual and may be flagging you as somebody who is at risk, may not be compliant, and that has a, a much broader implication. So it's inherent in the interest of these organizations to be able to provide the right information so that they're not getting challenged by their customers and losing customers as a result because they're not being able to you know, establish the right levels of control. Data quality not only helps ensure data governance and compliance to the regulations, but it's really a core factor in terms of your overall business because your business is about serving your customer base. And if you're not able to identify the right level of information in terms of your customers, your consumers, they're not going to stay with you from a business perspective. So it's a, really a broader business criteria that comes into play here. Thanks, Harold. So uh, we'll pick up on one more regulation, which is uh, anti-money laundering, which obviously affects financial services organizations primarily. 
and essentially that that regulation is there to which 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 uh, mandates that the, the the organization has to check the identity of their customers uh, in particular check the beneficial owners and recipients of uh, financial transactions and trades and money transfers and so on also monitor the business activities and again put control systems in place for that data as well so again very very strong on the data data being very fundamental not only to the governance aspect but the, in, in order for the governance aspect to work correctly like that uh, the quality has to be there but let's look. Um, again not that uh, um, data quality doesn't provide AML per se what it does is it's used as a prerequisite to a bank's internal AML process and it does that by making sure that the data is of the highest quality to make sure that it stands the best chance of actually passing or failing the AML process accurately as they want it to do. So let's have a look. What probably the most obvious one is, I guess, what we call uh, matching and suppression against sanctions lists. So a sanction list would be uh, a list of known money launderers, terrorists, criminals, and so on. So in a very simple example, we have some bank data here on the left hand side and we have uh, uh, the, the, the corresponding person on, on the sanction list which is which is published between banks and in this particular case we wouldn't get a match and we wouldn't get a match because the data quality doesn't match correctly or we might get a mismatch so we might include people that we shouldn't do or we were missing people that we should do and that's simply because the data quality or in, in terms of the bank's data isn't good enough quality whereas once it's actually been put through a dq process and it's been standardized and passed and, and structured correctly it has the optimum chance of actually matching on a sanction list so that's a really really key i guess it's quite obvious but it's such a fundamental aspect to making sure financial organizations don't transact with known criminals and terrorists and so on just making sure their raw names and addresses are accurate in the first place but possibly a slightly more unusual one which is when banks transfer money and data to each other they, they do so in the form of uh, a swift message and a swift message is effectively uh, an xml structure of data and again the quality of that xml file is effectively paramount to the, the reporting of it the governance on it and also the actual operation of moving that money and moving that data around so let's have a look so on the right hand side that's effectively a swift message it looks like an xml once you've passed it out once we've actually identified that this is how a raw swift message might come in but once we actually look at it what we can actually identify that we've actually got missing information so where we've got red we've got missing information and where we've got the yellow we've got abbreviated information and again to stand the optimum chance of matching the recipient's data or to stand, stop, stand the optimum chance of matching against sanction lists, we want that data to be the highest possible data quality. So again, it sounds straightforward, but simply by applying the data quality processes and structuring and passing and standardizing that data as correctly as possible, it stands the best chance of matching the recipients as well. So that's a key part of anti-money laundering, checking on the beneficial owner, the recipient of that data packet as well. And at the same time, we can also help with the data quality on the actual bank information too. And as, as bizarre as it sounds, the number of uh, SWIFT messages which have missing key information, such as postcodes or bank, bank or bit numbers or whatever. So in this case, we passed and stripped out that, 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 that SWIFT message. We've identified there's missing information and we can do matches on it and actually then bring it back. And we can do that in real time. And that, of course, is fundamental to the, the, the operation of that business. If they are sending swift messages from A to B in, in split second, they need to be sure that the quality of that data within that message is the highest possible quality to make sure that it's not you know, subject to money laundering regulations or whatever. So again, you know, something which potentially might seem relatively straightforward, but if there was no DQ processing, it would directly increase the chances of any financial organization processing illegal trades or transactions or opening accounts with terrorists or criminals, which they shouldn't have. So again, DQ is fundamental to AML regulation. And without it, 
it simply would fail. So again, data quality has strengthened the governance for, for that particular regulation. So we looked a little bit here at, at, at some of the, you know, the different challenges, some of the areas where data quality is really informing you know, data governance strategy. But how do we begin to look at this from a sort of an execution uh, strategy? We've got a lot of information coming in. We've got multiple versions of the truth. We've got data challenges. What, sometimes we don't know what those data challenges are. Sometimes we have very inflexible organizations where it's simply a challenge to to try and move anything forward. One of the things I, I've consistently found over the years is starting small, hitting something up where you can begin to get some demonstrable results you know, is really critical. And it, this is what, one of the areas where I see data quality is really central to, to data governance practice. Now, data governance encompasses a, a lot of aspects in terms of process, people, you know, as, as well as, you know, tools, capabilities, how communication strategy. There's a lot that, that's going to go into a data governance strategy. But areas where you can really begin to target, you know, something like, you know, the, these compliance initiatives, da, da, particular data quality areas. Right? These are things where you can really target, you know, some business value, you get some quick identification of key business objectives. And, and this may be in the area in terms, you know, I'm trying to increase revenue here, minimize risk, decrease cost, you know, which is the bigger value access I'm trying to, to address. And do I have to, did I get a client? Yeah. Somebody out of my organization is experiencing pain on one of these areas. This, this is an area to really target, you know, from that data governance perspective. What is that pain? What, what are the policies involved? And what's going to tell us whether, where we are and where we want to be? You know, if, if we're looking at, you know, these the statistics that say, you know, 40% of executives or whatever don't trust their information, I mean, that's, a, that's a huge pain point. How do we target something like that? How do we help validate or maybe show that, you know, the data is something that, you know, we can pretty good trust? This is where small projects, agile projects, you know, really come into play. How do we focus on aligning to those objectives, adopting to, you know, what we need to do, and then getting some real quick wins because we need to be able to evaluate progress. And this is really central to data quality, central to data governance, and it's where data quality can really help provide ongoing value. And sometimes it may not even be in areas where you know you think about sort of high level compliance. It may also just be in areas around your data governance tool. You know, if you launch a particular initiative around you know, terminology and in the business glossary, how do you know where you are in that? You want to take some measurements around that particular process as well. And that, that may be an aspect in terms of basic data quality tool and apply to your data governance tool. Say, where am I in this particular process? How many terms do I have out here? How many of these things have gotten into an approved state? Let me get some uh, quick assessment on some of these things. And, and use that as a way to really establish, you know, in effect, a, a way of, of thinking about how data quality, the metrics, the measurements, the monitoring of information, give you ongoing insight and, and allow you to really, you know, kind of start from that, you know, that core perspective and be able to expand out. Secondly, we really need to be able to, to make sure that, you know, we're collaborating in, in this particular process. You know, what, what is going to be, you know, the, the keys that allow us to understand kind of across business, you know, what we have, are addressing what's the terminology is. You know, so governance practices you know, become very critical in here, but it's also very critical just from a standpoint of, of the data. And, and, we, and we think about a lot of the discussions around data literacy going on these days. How do we help ensure that everyone in our organization is talking about the same things and doing it in a way that they understand how they're approaching looking at data and getting across some of those organizational barriers and silos and engaging people in that particular process. Policies and standards are going to be very central to that, being able to communicate out you know, broadly, you know, what people need to be thinking about and looking at. As we get some of those early wins, those quick wins, get that information collected, this is a, something that allows us to 
get broader buy-in. We can point back to our successes or point back to these things that are particular challenges and barriers and continue to build out a structure and culture and ownership around the process, the data that's going to help drive the overall business value. Now, it's central in this particular process to really be able to go back, back to the slide, please. It's central in here to really be able to enrich the information that we have. We need to be able to discover what we don't know. It goes back to the point I made you know, very early on. What you don't know can hurt you. And this can encompass everything from issues in terms of bias in the data to samples that simply are not valid for what we're trying to accomplish. It's really critical to be able to make some insights into it. So the data that we're looking at to be able to inform the broader organization about what we've found, where the challenges are, where the issues may be in terms of trust, be able to annotate that to increase that overall insight, and then be able to then share that information out regularly. How, where are the wins that we're getting? What, what are we demonstrating out of this particular process? How do we find these particular outcomes that are going to have you know, that ongoing value so that people understand what they can do, how they can take, you know, basically get empowered to, you know, continue to drive, you know, these particular practices. And completing that particular cycle, it's a matter of really quantifying information. We need to understand, you know, hidden activities, you know, where are we getting resource waste? Where are we, do, we do not seeing transparency? Where are we not seeing trust? Where's the disconnect in this particular process? We can begin to see these, you know, as, as we've worked through some of these practices, we begin to establish key baselines. We want to be able to keep that focus, continue to drive out metrics that are meaningful. You know, and we may find over time that certain things have value, certain things don't, being able to you know, adjust and refine that is really critical in that process. Which things are going to highlight, you know, the, that business value? Which highlight, you know, our ability to, you know, document compliance, help on transform that particular culture? Which things do we need to continuously review? Which things should we stop reviewing because they're not providing any particular value add? So we're, we're focusing on the things that we need to, the information is getting surfaced to you know, address and resolve key issues, look for those particular root causes, and continue to quantify those impact changes. It's really critical to be able to consistently finish you know, these initiatives, go on, drive value, capture those metrics, do that repeatedly, tie that into that overall process framework that we're putting in place you know, from a data governance perspective. And it becomes this sort of ongoing informative channel that everyone can begin to, you know, really participate. So just kind of summarizing, you know, kind of the particular, uh, you know, views. Um, next slide, please. I think that the, uh, sort of the message we really want to be able to convey here is that, you know, the accuracy of information, you know, the quality of data, you know, is directly impinging on the downstream activities. Some of that may be, you know, trigger compliance. And, and, you know, that's obviously an area that, you know, data governance really came out of being able to, you know, help ensure that we're, we're addressing these compliance needs, you know, we're reducing risk in our organizations. We're doing that from consistent, you know, valid, you know, reporting, dashboarding uh, in terms of these, these particular areas. But it extends broadly out into the organization. It's about customer care. It's about dealing with business initiatives and business directives. Any of these particular things are areas where data quality continues to not only strengthen data governance, strengthen compliance, strengthen our view and trust of information. It's also about being able to drive out sensible business decisions. As Divinity said, yeah, this is really a symbiotic relationship. This is about data quality, helping to facilitate what we want to accomplish in data governance. Data governance providing those ongoing framework, processes, 
people approach that helps inform how we put data and quality pieces in practice and give us ongoing value and wins in that critical process. So with that, I would like to, I think, open it up for uh, questions. Divinity and Harold, thank you so much for this great presentation. If you have questions, feel free to submit them in the bottom right-hand corner for our great speakers. And just to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email with links to the slides and links to the recording of this presentation by end of day Friday. So diving in here, you know, can functional localized data quality activities be successful without an enterprise-level data governance framework, or is it doomed to fail? Well, I, I certainly don't think it's doomed to fail. Now, there's barriers there. I mean, I, I think, you know, this is where, you know, it, it's so critical to be looking at an organization and, and to, for senior level executives to have an approach in terms of data, you know, where they're seeing that particular value. But we, I mean, we've seen this growing particularly over the last decade with the advent of the, you know, the chief data officer, uh, data governance, Council, data governance programs, you know, this is certainly infiltrating, you know, a lot of organizations. It's not necessarily universal, but it's certainly infiltrating. That is going to certainly help the overall piece. In, with the lack of that, is it doomed to fail? No, I don't think it's doomed to fail, but, you know, there, there's barriers there that are going to be more challenging to overcome. It may be that we're simply able to do it within a particular practice area. That may be enough to begin to, you know, get you know, business interest, business buy-in, but this is an important piece. Yeah, and it's something that's beyond just compliance, it's beyond regulation, beyond sort of red tape that gets in the way. But get people thinking about this as sort of a, a core business driver. This is something that is actually going to not only reduce risk, reduce costs, but it'd be able to help drive ongoing revenue value because we're able to make better business decisions. Divinity, anything you want to add to that? No, I think I think, I think Harold summed it up really well. I think, um, as he pointed out, with the rise of the CDO office in the last decade, it, it, it's seen a fundamental shift, whereas data before, let's say 10 years ago, uh, sort of fell in the cracks, if you like, between uh, potentially IT departments who, who would maintain that data and looked after the systems that ran the data, and then lines of business users and managers and directors who had who had to use that data in some way. It, it sort of felt that there was a, a that, that data was falling in the gap in terms of who actually owned probably the most important corporate asset they have. And, and certainly in the last 10 years and certainly the last couple with, with the rise of regulations such as a, a GDPR, you know, businesses have really, really come to realize that data is so fundamental and so important that there is this, re this, this renewed emphasis on looking after that data so well. And, and, that, and that's a really good thing to see. Um, but I think, you know, DQ can do so much, but as, as we've tried to allude to today, um, it's still got to try and fit in, in, in into a framework which is makes the DQ relevant for the business. It's not simply about just cleaning data for the sake of it. It's got to be relevant and pertinent to actually facilitate beneficial beneficial use to the business. You know, and along those same lines, you know, uh, this next question is, you know, what are your recommendations when there is no regulations to re rely on regarding data quality efforts, personal experience equates it to herding cats? You know, and, and in almost every webinar that we do uh, here at Dataversity, we always get that question, you know, of, of how do we get executive buy-in? Um, you know, it's just kind of tacks on to that very first question there. I actually, I always think that, the, the, the fun thing, and you know, I've got a sort of perverse interest in data quality, um, but I, I, I actually think data quality is such a tangible thing to show benefits from, whether it be um, from reporting being more accurate or, you know, stopping showing false positives, to making better decisions, to better targeting, to better ROI models, to better campaigning, to less risk. But I, I think data quality is such a, a tangible thing to, to be able to present the benefits. I, I've never, I've never really struggled to show a, a business, even if they don't sit in a, in a typically uh, regulated industry like you know healthcare or finances or whatever. I've never been, I've never once struggled to sort of show, 
well, this is what you're doing now. Even if it's, um, you know, a, a delivery company sending out a million packets a year, um, you know, if we can show that they've got X percent duplication, they're sending out packets, you know, too many times, or they're sending, you know, the drivers out inefficiently. If we can show that by applying simple data quality techniques, we can improve their efficiency and reduce their churn and reduce their wastage. I think I think data quality is such a, a a relatively easy thing to prove because it is so tangible. I I, I think kind of add, adding on to that, you know, just just you know briefly, uh, what, one of the things that I, I think that people often struggle with, you know, and, and why it's often difficult to get that breaker by, it has to do with, with with the terminology and being able to talk to the business in a way that you know, is meaningful for the business is, is really a central piece. You know, I, I think coming at it and, and saying, you know, well, you know, we're, we're seeing, you know, you know, you know, you know, X amount of records, you know, which you know aren't complete. The, the questions are going to be there. You know, so, you know, what, what does this mean, you know, for me at this particular point? You know, as Divinity was saying, you know. Being able to talk about the business, the business problem, you know, this means this in terms of our organization. We are going to see, you know, you know, this is impacting customer churn. This is impacting, you know, these particular areas. This is impacting, you know, our, our risk, uh, you know, in, in the organization. It, it's bringing us over a level of risk con. You know, being able to have that sort of terminology, you know, that's really one of those central things I see in terms of you know, that strategy around this, is being able to talk you know, at that language. And, and that's, uh, I think, you know, a key part of that sort of data literacy conversation is being able to understand the business and the business language and how data quality fits into that discussion in the organization. Yeah, and I think with things such as just finishing up from that as well, with you know, with wide-reaching regulations such as GDPR, you know, it's woken up the entire industry. It's not just IT or finance or marketing, or whatever. Anybody that holds any customer data, whether it be personal data or sensitive data, you know, everyone now knows it sharpened their pencils last year that if you hold customer data, you've got to look after it properly. And I, you know. Uh, we have lots of great questions coming in. Keep them coming. We'll get to as many as we can before the top of the hour here in just a few minutes. Um, so, you know, I don't want to let this question pass you all by. Uh, what tools do you recommend and have implemented to address data quality and governance? <laughs> well, uh, I'm not sure I should go straight, back in, straight into sales mode for that, but of course, you know, we obviously have a number of tools which uh, do everything which we've referred to today from understanding and profiling and analyzing and auditing data uh, to understand the nuances and the peculiarities and the outlying data and the poor data. Um, we've got software which of course monitors data quality from a, a business rule perspective to see if it's complying with the, with the regulation data governance business rules that will have been set up as part of that framework. We have of course software that works uh, in both batch, real time, and in big data spaces that can cleanse uh, huge volumes of data from anything from sub-second real time through to hundreds of millions of records. Um, and we're used to working with, with very large complex data sets, but I'm trying to sort of stay very much away from going straight into sales mode. I love it. <laughs> it's great. No, it's really good. It's very helpful. So, um, okay, I'm going to try and sleep in one last question here. Um, for any data governance initiative, what is the sequence of activity, activities from a data quality perspective? Well, my, my, my number one answer is what's the question? And, you know, this is really sort of a, a fundamental piece. If I don't know what the question is, it's very hard to be able to say, What's the next thing that I need to know? I want to be able to understand what, what's the question, what's the problem? You know, this goes back to what Divinity pointed out in terms of, you know, fitness of use, fitness for purpose. What's my purpose here? What am I trying to achieve? What are the questions that I need to ask about the data? And when I have an understanding for that, the question is, 
I can begin to frame, well, you know, here are the particular requirements that I have for data. Here's the particular things I need to be able to understand. Now I'm at a point where I can make steps and decisions about what those next activities are. And it may be different. It may simply, I may have some of that answers already. It may be that I need to go back and profile information or begin to look at, you know, cross relationships across the data. But I have to understand what I'm trying to accomplish. What's the question? Yeah, agreed. And from very, a from very special. Yeah, sorry, just to finish up from a data perspective, that's absolutely right. From a business perspective, of course, you need to know what the right questions are in terms of what the business problem is. From a data perspective, we always start with understanding, always start with profiling and understanding the data, you know, diving into that data. How can you make the right decisions about addressing quality issues? How can you go about remediating that data or making it relevant to the business if you don't even understand what's wrong with it to start with? So, Everything always, always, always starts with understanding that data. Well, that brings us to the right to the top of the hour. Thank you both so much for this fantastic presentation, and thanks to our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do and all the great questions coming in. Uh, just again, reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Friday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. And again, and thanks to SingSort for today's sponsorship to help make all of our webinars happen. Divinity and Harold, thank you so much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you, thank you in the world. everybody for joining. Yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Love it. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye now.